Hello, everyone, and welcome to our class on metaplots. We're moving uh, for the next two classes to making metaplots, but first, let's just stop and ask, what is a metaplot? Um, you might have heard the term, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's go through what we mean by um, a metaplot here. And so what we can think of a metaplot is an average of gram, where it's kind of we have genomic data, so we have like 30,000 observations of like 30,000 promoters. How do we visualize what the average thing is happening at a given position in a promoter? And so here's an example of one from uh, the Deep Tool software. But really, let's just break it down simply where each row um, is an enhancer. But let's say in our case, moving forward, it's going to be a promoter. So from upstream 1KB to downstream 1KB, would be the width of each row, and the middle would be the transcriptional start site. And um, so we can see that each of these rows is here, and that's a big plot, and we can see actually all the data individually here, um, where red is lower numbers and blue is higher numbers. We can see most of the action is happening here. However, how do we make a uh, meta plot of this? This is actually all the data, and that's what this is, where we can take the average at each column or its position in the window and take how much of the signal is in there. And so it really breaks down as simply as having um, windows. It can be enhancers, it can be link RNAs, it can be genes with RNA-seq values. Um, and we're just gonna apply it to promoters for now where we would have 30,000 some rows, each row being a promoter, upstream 1KB and downstream 1KB is the uh, data we'll analyze uh, next. Um, okay, so this is uh, one example here where you can see at the center of the enhancers where the signal is, and this one plot summarizes a lot of this data uh, very nicely. We can see that sometimes there's other patterns here where the darker the blue, um, the more numbers of features were there. Um, and so if we're at a given position or each column is a position in the window, it's giving a value of how much activity is there, like peak uh, chip seek peak overlaps, for instance, counting how many there are. And so we can see this pattern where it dips down in the opposite one here, where the average of the signal is coming from here. And so these average diagrams or <laughs> metaplots tell you um, sort of in a visual way can summarize a lot of information. And then you have to also remember that they can are, are summarizing a lot of information. And so a lot is missing from the actual plot. Um, and this is just another one showing a different pattern here. And so we're going to use uh, the example um, in class where the window is a promoter. So each row will be a promoter, and each column will be a position in the promoter window. And we will then use um, our promoter peak occurrence matrix, which has already told us for a given DNA binding proteins, let's say 20,000 chip peaks, um, where do they overlap in a given promoter window? And then we can sum all those promoters as, as rows, like in these uh, examples, and then um, sum the columns and find the, the sort of meta plot of that binding. Um, and so we're going to just step through it conceptually, and then we'll go through it in the next video. We'll go through this by code. So first thing we need is promoters. And we've uh, made that several times, and we'll just load in our long non-coding RNA mRNA promoters file from 01 peak features. Um, uh, so we'll we'll have those windows in the genomic ranges, um, and we can uh, know where uh, the each of the promoters is uh, relative to each other um, in our promoter peak uh, G ranges um, that we've been using. Okay, so we'll have our promoters here um, as the G ranges, and we have our chip seek peak as the G ranges. And so in both of these cases, we're in genomic range space, which is basically the coordinates of the start and stop of these peaks um, and then which chromosome they're on, and same for the genes um, or the promoter regions. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is uh, transforming these promoters in uh, to 2KB windows. And we've done this many times, but here's the code here, promoters. Um, we've changed this to 1KB upstream and downstream. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so then next what we have is uh, whether 
on an, an entire chromosome whether a peak overlap there at a given position. So it gets a one if there was an overlap of a chip peak um, here. And we can see one issue right away to think about is what if there's a peak outside um, or there's a gene annotated after your last peak? Well, you wanna get rid of that. Um, that can cause an error later um, and where it doesn't have uh, values to overlap with. Okay, so um, we want to get rid of that. We'll, we'll do that. Um, and then we'll take our promoter windows and go across, align them across their entire chromosome. And we're going to be an inner journal range list space here. So we're going to, we've worked with G ranges and um, I ranges. And now we're going to do another one, which is inner journal ranges. It's the same kind of idea that you have starts and stops and a meta tag of which chromosome they're on. And we'll look at that more closely in the code. Um, but that's why we have these ones and zeros and we sort of count the, or get a value if there is an overlap of the chip peak at every position in the window across the two KB. And this is where we're gonna be an integer range list. So we're gonna have to convert our promoters, our two ingredients are our promoters list and our peaks list. And we're going to convert both of those to an integer range, integer range list and run a function that we'll learn with views, which is essentially like find overlaps, which is going to say find the overlaps between the peak coverage ones and zeros here and where the positions of the promoters are, as was just animated. Okay, so then now we can make a list or we can uh, make this a long list now um down and for each promoter um how many positions had peak overlaps or not um and so this is a really handy concept it's subtly similar to just finding overlaps which we did but now we're getting a position of where that overlap was in a given window rather than just yes or no like we've done previously so we're getting a lot more information um by doing this and then this will get for each chromosome and we'll first need to uh turn promoters that are on the watson and crick strand um the same direction um or plus or minus strand and so ones that are on the minus strand are facing the other direction <clears throat> we're simply just going to take these values here and flip them around we're just going to reorder them so they're that way and that way, we're always looking at the position um, of the TSSs in the same direction. We're making <clears throat> it all relative to average over um, and make our average or gram or meta plot. Um, I should say Olive, Oliver Rando is uh, a professor at UMass Wooster, and he is the one that uh, coined the term average gram. I did not, um, but I thought it was a very clever way of describing this. Okay, so now... We have all of our promoters lined up in the values at each position of whether a peak overlapped. We can sum the columns here <clears throat> and we can see how many events happened at the first base and then the second base, the third base. And we can then divide that by the total number of promoters or 36,000. And what we're getting, <clears throat> excuse me, is what percentage of the peaks overlapped promoters at that position. Is essentially what we're normalizing uh, for here. Um, I think I have that here. Yeah, sorry. So that you would sum these up. And so col column three would have a one, column four would have a five, et cetera. And then you just divide it by the number of rows and you get this sort of percentage um, shown here. Again, we're using one KB. I apologize for this. But um, what we can see then is that most of the binding a very few percentage of the uh, positions here had overlaps, and then more and more of the position, this position had overlaps with it, and then it tapered back down on the other side. And so we can now basically have had our, like we started with those long heat maps and sort of take the um, density of data over um, across each row and by summing all, and then summing all the columns in each row. Um, all right, so that is the conceptual uh, version of what we are going to do with the code in the next class. So with that, thank you and be well.